This is the reverser. What you want to do every morning is roll your two grease zerks so you're at 12 and 2. And what that is, you put 12 pumps at the 12 o'clock one, 2 pumps at the 2 o'clock one. You also have your reverser gear case. There's this plug right here. Pull that out. There's a dipstick. You want to see the oil on the bottom of the dipstick. There's a knurled part. You want to be able to have the oil within that neural area. When using the gear lube, you want to use the synthetic HD460. It's a TY26408 part number, and that's the only oil that you should be using in here. It's a synthetic lube. It handles um, tough crop conditions and heavy loads on your gears. Also for grease, the best grease to use would be a heavy duty or extreme duty synthetic grease, which is a TY25744. I would at least use that on your feeder house reverser, if not the entire combine. So, but it's more important just to use it on your reverser shivs. Next, we want to talk about maintaining your upper variable speed for your feeder house. There's two zerks on the top, on the inside of the of the upper shiv and they'll be right together. Uh, those need three to four pumps every 10 to 15 every 10 to 15 hours. Uh, they're on the inside. Many times it's easiest to roll it around to where the zerks are pointing down at the ground. Then you can come up from the bottom and grease them. But those are on the inside of these two shivs uh, on the upper feeder house. On your 9870 or 9770 with a five-speed feeder house drive this is a look at your reverser. Notice there are no longer variable shivs. It's a triple banded belt on a fixed speed drive and you change your speeds with the five speed transmission up behind the cab. There are no grease zerks here. However, you still have the oil reservoir and you need to check that periodically and you need to change the oil once a season. Also on your five speed feeder house drive, you've got the, a different idler set up. Before you only had a single idler, now you have a double idler and you use this spring right here to tension that and you just put the spring at the end of the gauge. Now we're looking at our real pump drive which is right below the electric clutch and on the inside of the left hand dual. Uh, there's a grease circ right here to grease that real pump bearing. This gets missed an awful lot. Uh, needs to be hit at least every 50 hours if not more often than that and give it five or six pumps uh, each time that you do grease it. But about every uh, 10 or every 50 hours or so we need to be greasing that if not more often. Here we're looking at the primary countershaft gear case dipstick. This will be on, out on the ladder landing behind the access door. Reach back in there and pull this dipstick once a day to check the oil level. Now I want to talk about one of the more important things that gets missed on daily maintenance of the combine. Your rock trap is really important uh, to empty it out daily. Um, for reasons such as if, if you leave it overnight uh, it's going to be harder to clean out. If you clean it out of an evening number one you're probably already dirty and number two uh, it's much easier to clean out because it hasn't sat overnight and the dew collected and it get packed in there. Uh, also leaving it for an extended period of time uh, the material and dirt and other debris gets there and it fills that rock trap up and as that happens then if you do happen to ingest a rock it can't displace the material already in the rock trap and then your rock will go ahead and go on through your machine. But to empty your rock trap, right now it's in the em empty position. Uh, to close it, simply push down on the handle until it makes the face, and then give it an extra push until it latches over center. To open it back up, pull out on it, give it a tug, and it'll open up. Now if you do this uh, every day with a long garden rake pole or a garden hoe or something of that, that uh, type, you can reach in under there and don't even have to crawl in under the feeder house. If you do happen to get in under there, make sure you have the feeder house stop in place uh, if you're going to be underneath the feeder house to clean it out. And that's, that's the importance of the rock trap. Here's the hydraulic reservoir in your combine. Um, the, the sight gauge right here, you need to check that with the feeder house on the ground and just make sure that it, the, the sight gauge is between the two marks. Now this is our hydraulic reservoir. Um, the oil we use now in the hydraulics on our all new S-Series combines is regular high guard. We no longer need to use low viscosity high guard. Um, only in very, very, very cold conditions would uh, low viscosity be necessary. So the factory fill is regular high guard, just like what we use in tractors. Uh, one thing to note, here's our sight tube for our hydraulic reservoir. 
when we check that we need to make sure that the feeder house is lowered all the way to the ground and again if we need to top it off we need to use regular high guard this is a sediment bowl on the bottom right hand side above the rear axle for your fuel system this comes right out of the tank and is a 250 micron screen this is just to get large debris out of your fuel system um, this has an o-ring on it you shut the fuel off at the bottom of the tank and then you can remove this bowl and clean it out uh, you'll see over time you'll get bean fuzz uh, corn corn stalk uh, leaves in here uh, but this is just a pre-filter before you get to the main filters up top here we're up in the engine compartment right behind the grain tank uh, this is the coolant recovery tank for 2009 model year machines and later uh, earlier machines still have the coolant recovery tank back on the rotary screen uh, but this this has been mounted up here to do a better job of removing air from the coolant system this is your coolant recovery tank um, there if you look through the gap here in the shield there is a max cold and a minimum cold line you just want to check to make sure that the coolant is between the two lines before you start if you do need to add you can add it up on the top uh, with the blue lid. Back in the engine compartment where you've got your rotor screen and all your radiators, transmission cooler, engine cooler, or oil coolers, you now have an adjustable louver. The entire louver moves in and out. First position is for transport. The middle position is for normal operating conditions. And if you're doing wheat, especially in the southern part of the state, you want to open this up to allow more air to flow through here. All you do is you just pull this pin and push out on it and it'll lock itself in. Back in the engine compartment at the top of your cab or ladder landing is your def tank. About every other fuel fill you want to fill this up also. Just pop your cap, put in your funnel, fill it with a jug, or you can put it in your nozzle if you're filling it from bulk. You want to fill it right up until you see it in the sight glass right here. On the right hand side, back by your ladder going up into your engine compartment, down underneath here you've got your def pump. Round thing right here is your def filter. If you start getting codes for derated engine or def clogged, you want to take this out, clean it, or replace it. The intervals on this is every thousand hours to replace. Back here on the left side you'll notice on the final tier fours you have an after treatment debris remover. You have your filter that you're going to want to remove every year to blow out or replace. Pipe comes back, it goes through the blower, and then your pipe runs back into where your diesel particulate filler and your SRC is in the back engine compartment. What that does is that keeps all of that debris blowing through your diesel particulate filter to keep that all clean. This is the grease bank uh, underneath the unloading auger. This grease bank used to have a lot of grease zerks and most of those zerks went for the unloading auger swing. You'll notice that those zerks are now gone. What they've gone is a poly wear strip is up there now. Um, one thing we've noticed last year from using the combines without those grease zerks there now, if you're unloading on the go and consistently leave your auger out, you'll want to cycle the auger in and out You know, once every three or four rounds just to keep that surface from getting getting bound up and then unable to retrieve the unloading auger. There is one 400 hour grease zerk there and uh, that's about a once a season zerk. Alright now we're looking at our unloading auger gear case grease zerk. Um, it used to be on a grease bank on the 70 series. Now it's located here uh, near my chain idler from my unloading augers. Uh, that's a 400 hour zerk uh, but it's located here kind of near the idler uh, on my loading auger chain. Well now we're up in the engine compartment and what we're looking at is the dipstick for the main engine gear case. This needs to be checked daily for to maintain the proper oil level. Here we're looking at the upper fan drive for the cleaning fan. Um, this bearing right here is, has a zerk. It's hard to see you on camera but it's right behind uh, this metal bracket right here. That is a 50 hour zerk. You need to give that two to three shots every 50 hours. Okay, now here is my vertical unloading auger grease zerk um, on a 680 or a 690. It's going to be located by the lower sprocket uh, on your unloading auger drive chain, um, and it is also a 400 hour zerk. Also, in this shiv for the upper variable or for the rotor variable shiv, there is a pipe plug. 
every 400 hours or once a year this pipe plug needs to be removed and a grease zerk installed uh, at that time you need to put 40 to 45 pumps of grease in the pipe plug and then remove the pipe plug or remove the grease zerk and reinstall the pipe plug this is the variable speed drive for your rotor there's a zerk on there this needs to be hit every 50 hours with about 20 shots of grease. And then once you've done that, you also need to grease the inside shiv right behind the rotor. And after you've greased that one, you need to cycle the rotor speed through its speed range up and down several times to distribute the grease. Here's a grease circ on your inner drive shiv for your torque sensing unit right behind the rotor. This grease circ needs to be hit about every 50 hours or so with about 20 shots of grease. Once you've given it the grease, you need to speed it up and slow it down throughout the speed range to distribute the grease. And this needs to be done about every 50 hours. Here we're looking at the upper chopper jack shaft on a 60 series combine or a 9570 only. The 96, 97, and 9870 will not have these two zerks. They've gone to an oil bath design. But on a 9570 or any of the 50 or 60 series, you will have these two zerks right here and you need to hit those every 50 hours this has been a problem point if not if not maintained so make sure that you hit these two zerks every 50 hours this is your unloading auger drive shear bolt uh, if you get something stuck in the unloading auger this bolt will shear and the spares are hanging underneath the bracket just on the inside of this pulley here we're um, referencing the location of the slide on the power shaft running from the main engine gear case down to the primary counter shaft gear case Right here at the U-joint in the middle, there's a telescoping portion, and that's a once a season zerk that you need to hit every season, and all that's there is for the telescoping portion. The U-joints have no zerks. Here's our primary counter shaft drive shaft that runs from the main engine gear case down to our primary counter shaft. Um, this is on a 680 and 690 only. There are zerks on all the U-joints as well as the slide where the spline coupler is here at the center bearing. Uh, on the smaller combines, you do not have the grease circ on the smaller U on the U joints, but on the 680 and 690, you have grease circs on all the U joints as well as the spline coupler. Now we're looking at the fuel filters on the engine. This fuel filter is your primary filter. This fuel filter is your secondary filter. This is a canister style filter, and it is 10 microns. This is a spin-on type filter, and it is 2 microns. To change the fuel filters, you remove remove this black canister and put install your new filter put the new canister put the canister back on spin this filter off put the new filter on you don't need to fill the filters then turn the key on for approximately three minutes and then the engine should start it has a primer it has a priming pump and should be self bleeding this is the engine oil filter this filter is a paper type element uh, simply remove when you get ready to change the oil and filter remove this cap or loosen it what that will do is that will release a check valve in the bottom of the filter housing that will allow the oil in here to drain out uh, then you can drain your 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 crankcase once your crankcase is empty you can remove this filter and throw it away there's no need to allow it to drain for 24 hours as with past spin on filters here we're looking at the fuel filter and oil filter on a 9870 this is a spin on 2 micron filter this is your secondary filter then we have the bigger 10 micron filter as your primary filter. These are spin-ons. You do not need to fill these before you put the new filter back on the engine. Simply spin the new filters on, turn the key on for at least three minutes, and then go ahead and go to the start position and start the engine. Over here, the big long filter is your engine oil filter. Uh, it's also a spin-on filter, so just un take, the, take the old filter off and put the new filter on and refill your crankcase with oil and uh, start your engine. Here we're looking at the left hand side of the chopper uh, on the inside of the of the shivs. Uh, there's a bearing housing casing on each side of the chopper. Uh, we happen to be looking at the left side. Uh, there's a zerk here that you need to hit every 200 hours and give it four or five shots of grease every 200 hours. Now we're on the right hand side of the chopper. Uh, this is behind, underneath the plastic cover on the end of the chopper shaft. There's a grease zerk here and you need to give that four to five shots every 200 hours. We're looking at the grease zerk for the discharge beater. This is on the left hand side of the combine behind the light uh, light bank, the switch bank on the left hand side of the machine. Uh, this is also a 50 hour zerk that you need to give two to three shots every 50 hours. 
There's a grease bank on the right hand side above the feed accelerator belt. This, these two zerks, one, one uh, greases the, the separator drive bearing on the front of the rotor. The other one is on the primary counter shaft bearing uh, up above where the primary counter shaft comes from the left to the right side. This is your fan, your cleaning fan grease zerk. This grease zerk is located on the left hand side of the combine on the inside of the dual, uh, right on the cleaning fan shaft. Uh, that grease zerk is a 400 hour zerk or once every year. And uh, that one needs to be hit about every 400 hours or once a season. Here we're looking at the left hand side of the combine. Uh, there's a grease fitting on the feed accelerator bar shaft bearing. Uh, this is a once a season or 400 hour grease zerk. It's right in front of the reel pump and right behind the upper shiv uh, on the feeder house. And that's the feed accelerator left hand side bearing uh, housing. Here we're looking at the feed accelerator drive pulley on the right hand side of the combine. This, this uh, zerk right here greases the shaft for the feed accelerator and that is a 400 hour grease zerk. Now we're up here behind the rotor. At the rotor torque sensing unit there's a gear case back there. We're looking at the dipstick plug. You need to check that oil about every 400 hours or once a season. Here we're looking at the the pulley on the outside, be the left hand side of the combine on the end of the main engine gear case that drives your unloading auger. Uh, there's a zerk down inside of the pulley. Uh, it's hard to see here on camera, but uh, it's a once a year 400 hour zerk and it'll be down inside of the shiv. Uh, you need to hit that once a year. Here we're looking at the lower cleaning fan drive. This zerk right here is a 50 hour zerk. The one on the inside next to the bearing is a 400 hour zerk. Here we're looking at the shoe auger drive. Right here, this is a 400 hour zerk as well. It's a once a season or 400 hour zerk. It's on the right hand side of the combine. And this is what drives your conveyor augers underneath the concave. Now we're looking on the right hand side of the feeder house at the top. This is the feeder house drive slip clutch. There's two zerks on the slip clutch and that's 400 hour zerk. So once a season or every 400 hours and you need to grease that until grease is forced out past the seal. Here we're looking at the tailings auger drive clutch, the slip clutch. The, there's a zerk on it that needs to be greased every 400 hours. It's right up in behind the shiv, up on the shaft, right where the pulley goes on the shaft every 400 hours. This is the moisture sensor. It's on your clean grain elevator. At the end of the season, you want to take these two pins out. You just pull up and let this auger drop down and clean all this out up in here. Usually you can get in there with a air wand to blow it all out. Because otherwise beans, wheat, corn, whatever you got in there will get gummed up and then end up wrecking the auger or the motor. So clean this out at the end of every season. And then you just slide it up. There's a rod that comes down. You just line it up. And then you may have to use your finger and just slightly turn the auger to get it to lock back into place. It'll slide back up there, and then you just push your pins right back in. Now we're up in the grain tank on the front side of the fountain auger. Uh, this is your fountain auger drive gear case, and there's a dipstick here. Uh, once a year, you need to check that oil level and make sure it's uh, properly filled. Now we're looking at the main engine gear case filter. Uh, this filter needs to be changed once a year. Also is the main hydraulic filter, which is down under the pump stack. And that also needs to be changed once a year. This is the third of three hydraulic filters that need to be changed every year. This is down on the left hand side near the main valve stack. And again, there's three of these hydraulic filters. The other two are up in the engine compartment and they need to be changed once a season. On your 660, 670s, you'll notice this lower filter is different. It used to be the smaller diameter. Now it's much larger di diameter. So keep that in mind when you're replacing your oil filters. Here we're looking at our hydrostatic charge filter. This is also the filter for the closed center hydraulic system. And it is located on the side of the hydrostat up in the engine compartment. On your ProDrive transmission for your 9870, on the right front, on the inside of the dual, you have an extra filter that you'll need to change is for the transmission and for your five speed feeder house drive. Back in behind that, there's a lever that is a clean out door for your shoe augers and you wanna make sure that's closed before you begin harvest. 
Here we're at the battery box. Uh, there's two jumper posts, positive and negative. There's also a battery switch that you can shut the power to the rest of the combine off for storage over the winter. But just flip this switch one way or the other to turn power on or turn power off. Right, here we are on the, an S680 or an S690. The batteries have been relocated to the left side by the left rear tire. Um, to turn my switch on, I rotate it clockwise to the I to shut it off. I rotate it counterclockwise to the O. Alright, on an S680 and S690, along with the batteries being relocated to the left hand side, uh, both fuse boxes are also on the left hand side. Um, our main fuse box and our secondary fuse box are located here. So if you do need to uh, service a fuse, they'll be located on the left hand side. Now we're located at the fuse box. Uh, this is located right above the battery box. Uh, the fuse panel, they're all 30 amp fuses and they're the micro fuses. Uh, these are all located right here and these are the only fuses on the machine. Here we're looking at the final drive greaser. Um, if you're in muddy conditions, this needs to be greased daily. If you're in normal harvesting conditions, this needs to be greased every 50 hours. Okay, we're looking at the rear spindle. Uh, there's two zerks on the top and bottom of the spindle, one out on the axle, and then one on the tie rod. Um, if you're in muddy conditions, these need to be greased daily. If you are in normal harvesting conditions, then these are a 50 hour grease point. This is the cab air filter. Uh, this used to be located behind the cab, uh, outside on the ladder landing. Right now I'm just standing directly outside the cab door. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this knob and I'm going let, to let the bracket down and the filter is located right in here. You can pull that filter out and uh, blow any debris or uh, dust that's collected in it.